A couple steps. For the first time he's ever attended the Dean Burgon Society, Don Jr., D.A. Wade Jr., and he's going to be speaking on a subject I think of interest to all of us. Is the King James Bible readable? Is it understandable? Can you understand it, or is it way over the college level of our heads? He's done an excellent piece of research. I hope that you'll look at it. 275 pages, hours and hours. All right, Don, we're not going to start the watch until you start speaking. May the Lord bless you as you speak. If there's any uh, similarity between Father and Son as to detail, uh, it's purely coincidental, or is it? Go ahead. <laughs> now, I have a question for you this evening, and you look very alert, very healthy, very dry, a lot drier than it is outside, I'm sure. But uh, I'm wondering how many of you have ever heard anyone claim that the King James Bible is very difficult to read. Could you raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I've heard that too. I've heard that strange only for the last several years. When I was younger, as a young child, I never heard it was hard. I read it and didn't know any better. Uh, as I continue to read, I don't know any better. My young children, when they were first learning to read, the first book they learned to read was the King James Bible. The Puritans, the Pilgrims, the same thing. That was the standard of literacy in Puritan New England, the ability to read the Bible. Why suddenly do we hear all these claims that it's too difficult to read? Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out. Now, I'd like to read to you a few words. A lot of people are reading, and I know why. When you have a limited time, you have to read, otherwise you don't quite get it all in. So if you'll bear with me, I'll read a little introduction that I wrote, and it's in this, uh, I guess, book that's hot off the presses. I'm not sure if I slept very much the last week or two. I found out just a few days ago my dad wanted the book for this Dean Burgon meeting, so here it is, I think. And in any event, I'll be reading the introduction to uh, that particular book to get us started. And first we start with the reason for this study. The reason for this study. Why in the world would anyone bother to compare the readability of six complete English Bible versions based on four readability formulas? Now, although the answer that I'm going to give you may not be entirely satisfactory, the question is a good one. For years, some have complained that the authorized version of 1611 was far too difficult to read. If today's college graduates stumble and falter over its cryptic pages, some ask, how can today's youngsters ever plumb its archaic depths? To fulfill this perceived need for a more readable English Bible translation, modern and more up-to-date translations appeared, each claiming to be newer and better in some way. Some claim to be based on more recent scholarship. Some claim to be more readable. Some claim to be more relevant to today's culture. Some claim to be more attractively laid out. And of course others made all of these claims and more. Interestingly enough, in spite of the availability of all of these so-called newer and improved English Bible versions, some still claim that the Bible in any current English version is too difficult to read. Believe it or not, I've heard that too. Maybe you have. Some of these even use the readability complaint as an excuse not to read the Bible at all. Can you believe that? I've heard that too. Others clamor for an even newer and easier to read version. When does it stop? Well, all this uproar about Bible readability has prompted me over the last few years to formulate several important questions. Number one, what is the readability level of the authorized version of 1611? 
Number two, are the newer English Bible versions easier to read than the venerable authorized version of 1611? And number three, how can I quantify the levels of English Bible readability? I was curious. Little did I know how much time I would waste or invest or spend in finding out the answer to these questions. But here they, all I did was a whole bunch of easy things over and over again. Add an item until I almost, <clears throat> well, we won't go into that. <laughs> Should I say cracked up? I'll leave that alone. That's some people's opinion. Now, the tools that I use for the study. <clears throat> the tools that I use for the study. The first tool I used, of course, was a computer. I would have been, I would have been working into the next uh, millennium, probably, if I had done this all by hand. But uh, I had a computer that I purchased at a used computer outlet last summer. Oh, excuse me, last spring. Correction. It, it ran Windows and all these things. I'll try to keep the computer technology down to the minimum. It's in the book, but uh, I'll keep it in the minimum of the talk. It was a 386. What does that mean? It means it was fairly fast. It had 8 megabytes of RAM, which means that it went even faster. Uh, that was the tool that I used. Then I, then I used Word for Windows 2.0. You could have used uh, other programs, word processing programs, uh, such as uh, WordPerfect, uh, which 6.0 I think has uh, uh, some, spell, some uh, grammar checkers. I could have used, uh, uh, I think they use Grammatique and WordPerfect. I could have used some other things, but I, I had Word for Windows 2.0. It happened to generate four different sets of readability statistics for reading uh, standards, you might say, and so I used that. To generate my Bible text, I had access to Logos 1.6, and I used that. You could have used the online Bible, any other uh, computer Bible that would have had given you access. Uh, the good thing about Logos was that at that time, last summer, I had six versions on that particular computer Bible, six different versions, and I used those six ones for the analysis that we worked on. Now, what about the evolution of this study? I know some of us don't believe in evolution, but in this case, it did evolve. I will confess. I saw it. It evolved. My wife can show you the mess, the trails of evolutionary changes as this study did evolve. It really did. Now, after some initial technical difficulties, I decided in the summer of 93, that was last summer, to start out with a preliminary analysis of the first chapter of every book in the Bible. Near the end of that preliminary analysis, I discovered how to reliably import every book of the Bible, even the entire Old Testament, the entire New Testament, uh, various sections, etc. And so I embarked on, uh, secondly, a book-by-book -book analysis of every single book in the six versions. Now, which six versions was I working on? I'll name them in uh, order from oldest to youngest. And of course, you know who the oldest kid in the block was? The 1611 authorized version. Secondly, the 1901 American Standard Version. At that time, the new American Standard was not available on Computer Bible. It is now, I believe. Thirdly, the 1946 Revised Standard Version. Fourthly, the 1978 New International Version. Fifthly, the 1982 New King James Version. And finally, the 1989 New Revised Standard Version. Now, because I chose these, it didn't mean I liked them. It just means those were the ones that were available on Computer Bible to me. So that's why I chose them. Finally, this summer, just finished this, not too long ago. Finally, in the summer of 1994, I generated and recorded the raw data necessary for a chapter-by-chapter -chapter readability analysis of all 1,189 chapters in the King James Version and all 1,189 chapters in the 1978 New International Version. Now, what method did I use for this study? Believe me, I won't bore you with all the computer details, but they're written down if you want to know them. To summarize the method that I used, nothing that difficult, really, once you get into it. Number one, I customized the grammar style checker in Word for Windows, the word processor that I was using to generate the readability statistics. I had to deactivate all 42 of the uh, special uh, grammar checkers that, you know, get you when you split your infinitives or things like that. I didn't want to mess with that, so to speak. I didn't want that to slow me down, so I simply deactivated those and only used the, uh, the little box that says uh, display readability statistics when done proofing. Secondly, again, I won't bore you with all the details, I exported Bible book text files. I used Logos 1.6, but you could use any other Bible, computer Bible if you wish to. I usually exported them uh, uh, six at a time, six books at a time. 
each of the versions of Genesis in turn. And I gave them a special name so I could find them in my computer. After exporting uh, those text files, then I had to import the text files into my Word for Windows 2.0 word processor. And I won't bore you with all those details. After importing those uh, books, say Genesis 1 in the King James Version, which I did import first, and then I imported other Bible versions after that. But after importing the Bible book, say Genesis, and the version, uh, then I had to generate the readability statistics, and that was real easy. That was the easiest part. All I had to do was, <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll simplify it, just press the button that said, that said tools, and then press the second button that said grammar, and voila. After a few minutes, or after a few hours, some cases eight hours, I'd come back to the screen and the computer was done with the job of analyzing every single word in that book or in that uh, book section like the entire Bible or the, or the entire New Testament or the entire Old Testament or the entire Pentateuch or whatever. You get the picture. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll skip some other things here. Some comments about the chapter by chapter analysis that might be a little bit interesting to you. Uh, to import uh, the chapters, I decided to import the entire book first, say Genesis. And then I would highlight the first chapter of Genesis only and analyze the first chapter. Then I would highlight the second chapter of Genesis. Just the second chapter, not the chapter headings, just the, just the words and the verse numbers which are a part of the Bible. And I went on until I finished Genesis chapter 15. And I was very careful not to highlight the copyrights uh, notices because that would mess up the reader late in an insignificant way, but maybe a little bit, so I was try, I try to be careful about that. Uh, I think that pretty well covers that. Now, what about the time required? I already referred to that. The book uh, by book, section by section analysis, I'll give you just a quick summary to, uh, to uh, do the entire uh, Bible in one version took eight hours. Eight hours. So eight times six is whatever it is. That's how long it took to do the entire Bible verse, portions. To do all six versions of the Old Testament took approximately it took six hours each. So six times six, thirty-six hours for the Old Testament. New Testament took about two hours per version. Now my three eighty-six is a little slower than some machines, but it's faster than others. It took ninety-six hours just to do the Old Testament and all of its versions. Just to do the New Testament and all of its versions to do the whole Bible and all of its versions, the six versions there. Pentateuch took about one and a half hours. Historical books, this is for one version. Historical books took two hours per version. Poetical books took about one hour per version. Major prophets took about one hour per version. Minor prophets took about 20 minutes per version. The Gospels took about 15 minutes per version. Pauline epistles took about 25 minutes per version. General epistles took about 10 minutes per version. And all told, uh, uh, those sections took about 40 and a half hours. Then we have the chapter by tap chapter uh, time frames, and I estimate about 48 hours for the King James Version and 48 hours for the NIV. And of course, none of this counts the time it took me to copy all the things down. I didn't have enough room in my briefcase, a ream of paper, about maybe two reams of paper, about 600, 700 sheets of paper, approximately thick, just to write down the raw data on. So I've got those originals, and then of course I type that up into my database program so I could graph that data or so I could have it and manipulate it. I didn't count that time. Also didn't count the time when the power went off and I had to do an eight hour study all over again. <laughs> Seven and a half hours, almost done with the King James whole Bible and boom, the power goes out. We live in a place where power goes out almost all the time. I'm glad the Lord's power never goes out. I'm glad for that. Well, I think it's time for me to turn this machine on and we'll take a look at some things that I've already talked about real quickly here. This is a... Uh, what the screen looked like if I'm up here and in focus. That's what the, if I was importing Genesis 1 through 50 in the King James Version, the whole book of Genesis, when I set that into the Word for Windows program, that's what it looks like. You see the Logos Bible software message at the top? Thank you. <clears throat> you see that at the top? If I can find it right there. Uh, you also see the Genesis 1 right there. But uh, trust me, this is an entire, this is the entire book of Genesis. Now, on the bottom uh, uh, slide, I guess we'll call it a slide there, uh, after approximately, I think it was about 25 minutes to do Genesis in one version, you see the statistics generated right there. Uh, the number of words is indicated. By the way, the verse numbers do count as a word. I have to mention that to you because that 
in a very minor way affects the readability, but not much. I, I've done it both ways. The problem with, with ruling the verses out, have you tried to erase every single verse from the King James Bible? Number, verse number. Some people try to erase the words, but if you try to erase just the verse numbers, uh, I, I would be would be rest, spending the rest of my life doing it. Secondly, there wasn't much difference. And thirdly, the numbers are part of the Bible, and they were part of all six versions. So I just uh, left well enough alone. When I... My wife will kill me for saying this, but when I do the verse by verse analysis of every word, every verse of every Bible version that I have, then we'll do that. But not now. Uh, that's a joke. I think maybe I don't think I'll do the verse by verse. <laughs> Anyhow, flesh re- the readability standards are right there. Genesis, ten percent passive voice. John hit the ball. Active voice. The ball was hit by John. Passive voice verb. So not too much passive voice. Uh, flesh reading ease, 85.0, which means easy. E-A-S-Y. You might be able to see it right there. Whoops, I'm loose. Oh, please. My microphone's okay. Pardon me. Okay. Now, the flesh grade level score is 6.5. What does that mean? That means grade 6, fifth month. So Genesis is written on a six, six and a half grade level. Uh, but the Flesh Kincaid version, uh, readability standard, says it's only on the fifth grade level. Genesis, as you see, is very hard to read. The Gunning Fog Index is not a grade level index, but again, it's a fairly low score, too, 6.6. So keep that in mind that the book of Genesis is very hard to read in the King James Version. Don't ever forget that. It's very important to remember. Now, if I can figure out how to do this. Here's what I did when I highlighted, uh, when I was importing the chapter by chapter text. I think that shows up. Notice I didn't import, I didn't, uh, I excluded this top stuff right here. All I did was the verse numbers and the words in chapter 1. Oh, good idea. This section here, you see, I went all the way to the end of Genesis 1, and I didn't get chapter 2, because that's not part of it. I think you've seen enough of that. <clears throat> now, the next uh, picture, we're going to see chapter 1's readability statistics. And they're pretty much like the whole books. Not too much difference. 85.4 flesh reading ease, as opposed to 85.0. That's about the same, isn't it? Easy. The 80s would be the easy. The 90s would be very easy. 6.5 grade level, exactly the same as the whole book of Genesis. Flesh Kincaid, 4.9. That's the, that's the ninth month of the fourth grade. And the Gunning Fog Index a little bit higher, 7.8, but nothing really bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can skip that part. <clears throat> have 50 of these, but I obviously have, don't have time for 50 minutes to show them all. Now, when I finished generating the statistics, I had write them down on a readability sheet that I already had pre-printed. And it looked like this. Characters means letters, in case you're wondering. Normally, computer characters in this particular check were letters. Uh, space for the KJV, NKJV, ASV, Revised Standard Version, New Revised Standard Version, NIV. Here's what it looks like when uh, I fill them out. And please forgive my messy handwriting. I can read it, but uh, you maybe can't. Here's the results from Genesis. The raw data sheet right there. You see all the, the dirty scores here. The clean ones, it's all there. Uh, first grade level for the KJV 6.5, for the New King James Version 6.5, American Standard Version 6.5, Revised Standard Version 6.4, New, Re- New Revised Standard Version 6.6, and our friend the NIV 6.7, grade level. So they're the worst, <coughs> second worst in that. But I don't want to point that out. That's not, that's not polite. Uh, I could have showed you Exodus, but I better hurry on because I have no idea how much time I have. How much time do I have? 32 minutes, 32 minutes left. Okay, I better hurry. Then after I... Um, Upside down? Uh, doesn't look as good upside down. <laughs> that looks better. I've got the problem of trying to line it up, and then I get it upside down. This is uh, the results of the printout of my uh, database. I typed in the data here. This is a book by book analysis, readability analysis, six Bible versions. You see that in the book of Genesis, all of them were easy for the fresh, flesh reading ease, all in the 80s, all the versions. From Exodus down through, Deuter- through Joshua... They're again uh, in the fairly easy range. The 70s are fairly easy readability. The grade levels are basically 6th grade here for Genesis, 7th grade for Exodus, 7th grade for Leviticus, 7th grade right down the line. So I'm not saying any of the versions are difficult to read, but the King James Version is certainly 2nd uh, place, 2nd place, 2nd place, 4th second place, 2nd second place, 2nd place. It's doing pretty well, especially for the 
for an old codger that it is in terms of its uh, age. Now, we'll shift gears. If I can keep these microphones on, we'll proceed. Now, the four uh, readability formulas that I use in this study, I've already referred to them a little bit, are important for you to understand. First of all, let me name them again. There's the flesh reading ease. I'll give you a basic summary of how that is computed. The flesh reading ease was one of the readability formulas that Word for Windows Grammar Checker generated. The flesh reading ease index is based on the average number of words per sentence and the average number of syllables per 100 words. In contrast to the other readability standards, the higher the flesh reading ease score, the easier the readability. Flesh reading ease scores indicate the following levels of readability. The 90s, very easy. Scores in the 80s are easy. Scores in the 70s are fairly easy. Scores in the 60s are standard, normal English writing. Scores in the 50s are fairly difficult. Scores in the 30s and 40s are difficult. And scores in the 20s and below are very difficult. And of course, we all know the King James Version is very difficult. So it'll always be in those scores. <clears throat> or is that true? We'll find out. Second standard that we used in Word for Windows, it was already in there. I didn't do anything to it. Flesh grade level. By the way, I didn't make these scores up. I just copied them down. All right? I didn't do anything. I just copied it down. Whatever poofed on the screen, I wrote it down. Flesh grade level. The flesh grade level index is also based on the average number of words per sentence, the average number of syllables per 100 words. The lower the flesh grading level score is, the easier the readability. As its name suggests, the flesh reading level index assigns an approximate grade level. Let me give you an example. A flesh grade level of 7.0, for example, indicates that the writing can be understood by an average English-speaking reader, whoever that is, an average English-speaking reader, who has completed seven years of education, that's right, not in Australia, not in Great Britain, not in Germany, but in the United States, which, you know, doesn't mean a whole lot because, well, I won't go into that. I've been a teacher for 23 years or so. I understand about that. But anyhow, that's the U.S. grade level, 7.0. Zero would be seventh grade. Flesh Kincaid also is a grade level uh, standard based on a few different things, but again, uh, it tries to give an equivalent uh, grade level. Gunning Fog Index is based, I didn't talk about that before, Gunning Fog Index is based on sentence length and the number of words per sentence with more than one syllable. Obviously, sentences with many multi syllable words are rated difficult to read. The lower the, the Gunning Fog Index score is, the easier. It is to read. Uh, Gunning Fog Index score of 4.5 is much more free of fog or mumbo jumbo than a portion with a Gunning Fog Index score of, say, 13.2. And again, if the King James Version is full of fog, we expect it to be way up there in the clouds, 13.5, 19.8, things like that. And you'll soon see if that's true or not. Now, a little historical perspective. Quickly, I'll show you the screen here. Uh, this, this is, by the way, a copy from... Word for Windows computer manual explaining how these readability scores are to be interpreted and how they're to be used. So, nothing particularly original. It's all from there. Uh, Word can provide information to help you evaluate how easily... I have no idea if it's up there or not. Okay. How easily your writing can be understood by the average adult reader. goes on. Uh, it explains things. Now, here is the screen. And this is interesting. You'd expect these statistics from the King James Version, wouldn't you? Readability statistics... This is a mystery document I've been looking for. I couldn't find it in the King James Version anywhere, a chapter or a book like this, but somewhere it must exist. Maybe it's a health care plan or maybe it's a tax code or something. But <laughs> notice the scores of the flesh reading ease here, if you can. 33.1. Now that is difficult reading, according to flesh reading ease. Look at the grade level, grade 15. Let's see now, 12 grades. 12th grade is senior in high school. 13th grade is your freshman year in college. 14th is your sophomore year. 15th is your junior year in college. So by the time you're a junior in college, maybe you can read this, whatever it is, this mystery document. This is the screen that pops up every time the readability statistics are done being generated. Okay? I never saw one this bad. I'll give you a clue. In any of the versions. In any of them. Notice the flesh Kincaid grade level. Pretty close to 15th grade. 14.8. So you're almost near the end of your sophomore year. Gunning Fog Index through the clouds, way up into the stratosphere, 19.9. Again, I've never seen anything like that before. Let's see, something else. 
How much time do we have? Ooh, okay. <clears throat> well, you've seen it? Now you can change it. Now you've seen it? Now you don't. Okay. <clears throat> Why just uh, they saw enough? Okay. <clears throat> now here's the validity of readability formula. Some people have questioned how valid these formulas are. Now I didn't make them up. I didn't even generate them. I just pressed the buttons and the computer did the work. I assume, you know, computers never make mistakes, but if they do, they make them big. And I'd notice if it were a big mistake, I think. I didn't notice anything that didn't make too much sense unless I made a mistake, and then I had to do it over again. So, uh, this is a quotation from the Cambridge Encyclopedia of Language, 1987, by David Crystal. May help place the value of readability standards in proper context. It shows you how the Fog Index, not the Gunning Fog Index, it's in 1952. I think the Gunning Fog Index is an update of this. It doesn't give a grade level. I won't go into that, but uh, again, it's the American grade level. But here is what I think is important, if you can see it. Not right here. Several such formulae, I think that's the British spelling of formulas, several such formulae have been proposed of varying levels of complexity. Most assume that difficulty can be measured simply in terms of the length of words and or sentences. However, and I'm telling you this because I want to be honest, because some will critique this and say, oh, oh, they're not always valid, these scores. However, there's no neat correlation between sentence length and difficulty. And not all long words are difficult to read. Of course that's true. Factors such as the complexity of sentence construction, or syntax in other words, and the nature of word meaning are far more important. But these, the procedures, such as the four that were generated, usually ignore. And they ignore them. They all ignore them. All 50 of them do. Now, after David Crystal has said this, notice what he goes on to say. Readability formula have thus attracted a great deal of criticism, but, and I emphasize this, in the absence of more sophisticated measures, until you come up with a computer program that can not only analyze the physical words and syllables and sentences, but also the comprehension, which nobody's come up with, by the way, until somebody comes up with a better formula, these are still widely used, these formulas. They're very widely used. The four that were used here are the most widely used ones today that I know of. But in the absence of more sophisticated measures, they continue to attract widespread use as a reasonably convenient way of predicting although not explaining, reading difficulty. They do predict, they don't explain, reading difficulty. These formulas, such as the 50, such as the 4 that I'm using for this study. Thought I'd mention that because inquiring minds like to know these things. <clears throat> now, let me, if I don't rip, I'm afraid to move because I'll tear these microphones off, but let me give you some Bible, some simple Bible sentence examples. I'm sure we all know Genesis 1 1 of the King James Version. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, to give you an idea here, please don't expect the readability formulas, any of them, even these four, to uh, address the subject of word order or syntax. They don't. For example, I could rearrange the words in Genesis 1 1 any way I wanted to. And as long as I had the same words didn't leave any out, the readability formulas would generate the same scores. Are you with me? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth, God in the beginning created. Earth, heaven, God, beginning, the, 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 and in created. All would generate the exact same readability scores. Do you understand me? They really would. Because all they're looking at is the physical... How well can you decode the words? How well can you sound out the words? The theory is the longer the word, the harder to sound out. That's often the, tr the case, and that's usually true, but not always. Second example, James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. We've joked for years about divers' temptations, but um, <clears throat> it's really just an old-fashioned version of diverse which we still use in our English today. But anyhow, it is sort of comical. It is sort of funny. But uh, I, before I could do a readability study on that particular verse, I had to change the semicolon to a period because these readability studies, the scores, I should say, are smart enough to recognize the semicolon does not end the sentence. Nor does a colon, nor does a comma. 
So I had to cheat and put a period there after temptations. Forgive me. I had to. Now, uh, these scores generated from that King James Version, James 1-2, indicate a flesh reading score of, I'll just summarize, of in the middle range of fairly easy. Flesh grade level, 7.5. Not too shabby. Now, let's make a few changes to illustrate how the readability formula works. If you change brethren to brothers, same number of letters, same number of syllables, guess what? No change in the readability scores. If you change ye to you, by the way, ye is only two letters, you is three letters, but since they're both only one syllable, no change in the scores. Now, let's dive in deeply with divers. If we change divers to various, divers, two syllables, got that? Various, three syllables, guess what? Various kicks the readability scores higher. And so we go up to, a, well, let's see, up to a sort of a standard readability in the flesh reading ease and goes up to the eighth grade second month level. See the difference one little syllable can make? Now, suppose we change uh, a word that will change the number of letters as well as the number of syllables at the same time. Let's go from temptations to testings. Temptations. Eight, uh, 11 letters, 3 syllables. Testings. 8 letters, 2 syllables. And guess what? The readability scores are better for the revised version than they were for the original. Now, let's make all the changes at once. So it reads, My brothers... Count it all joy when you fall into various testings. Guess what? What are the readability scores? Exactly the same as they were in the original King James Version of that verse. You haven't changed the readability any, as far as the scores are concerned. Well, just wanted to see how it works. Uh, now, it's true that the revised version may have some modern synonyms that may be easier for many to comprehend, but remember, the readability formula do not address the subject of, of uh, comprehension. They deal more with the physical act of decoding or sounding out words. Furthermore, many have no trouble at all sounding out and comprehending brethren, ye, divers, and temptations once these words, like any other words, are added to their vocabulary. And of course, what better way to widen one's vocabulary than to read excellent books, especially the book of books, the Bible. Another example, King James Version, uh, James 1.5. There's some common suffixes all the way through the King James Version. And admittedly, my young children and my students at school have trouble with the THs and the ETHs. They are very difficult sometimes. It's an extra syllable. Not impossible. The E's and these and thou's don't bother me, but the THs and the ETHs bother some people. If any of you lack wisdom, James 1.5 says, Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now the scores for the original with the TH aren't bad. They go like this. The very high, almost easy range, FRE, and 7.0 grade level. If we change gives, if we substitute gives for giveth, upgrades for upgradeth, those are the only changes we make, the scores rocket up to, instead of being 79.8, they go up to 86.3. And the grade level drops from 7.0 to 6.4. Now, my point in doing this is, the King James Version all the way through had a handicap of those THs and ETHs, and yet it still did pretty well. Just think how well it would have done if all the changes that were made, the only ones made, were getting those THs and the H's off. It would have been number one all the way through. I, I do believe that. I only say that, not that I'm saying we have to take them off, but if that's the only change you make, if you're really concerned about readability, you make that one change. Remove the THs, leave the E's and the V's and vowels and all that stuff. Get rid of that. And it would probably have taken the, the cake in every single test I did. Well, I have to skip. Well, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All one syllable words in the King James Version, but one. Yourselves. And the King James Version goes off the chart in excellent, easy readability. By the way, the NIV is in last place, dead last place. Let me give you the scores here. Yeah, I don't have time to go into it, but the, the flesh reading ease is off the charts. It's over 100, which means it's supersonically very easy. The concepts are hard in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. You spend a lifetime expounding that, but the words are very easy. The first, first grade level is below pre-primer. I mean, you hardly have to read to be able to read it. Gunning Fog, the next 2.7. Now, in contrast, I'll quickly cut to the chase of the NIV. It had the worst score, 88.0, which isn't bad. That's easy. 
uh, flesh grade level 6.2 as opposed to 0.0 grade level in the King James Version. 8.7 in the, in the flesh Kincaid as opposed to 0.0 for the King James Version. And the gunning fog in it was in the foggy stratosphere 12.4 as opposed to 2.7 with the King James Version. Just thought, this thought you might want to know. I'm going to have to skip. Obviously, how much time do I have? Oh, okay, just barely enough. Skip, 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 skip. Skip to my loo here. Well, uh, I, whether, I'm, whether I'm skipping anything important or not, we'll skip it. And we'll cut to the conclusion. You know, we all are in the same race for the clock, and, and that's not bad, really. It's really good, because you don't need to know all this stuff anyhow. Here's, here's the final paragraph. And now, <clears throat> it is time for you to see for yourself just how readable the King James Version really is. Are its readability scores in the very difficult range? Is it the hardest to read in every passage? Do the newer and better translations force the King James Version to hang its head in shame? The truth must be told. I have 15 minutes to tell the truth. <clears throat> It's going to be tough. I may need some help. Uh, Dad, you want to help me hand these to me? It's going to be fast and furious here. Uh, over here, get on this side, and you hand them to me, the handoff. Okay. Okay, okay there we go. Right up there, like that. Flesh reading East, King James Version. Every book from Genesis, which is book number one, to Revelation, book 65. Book 66 is Jude. Jude. Here's the, here's the 70 line. Below the 70 line, right across there, if you can see it, he is below the, well, let's put it this way. 70 and above, the flesh reading E scores are fairly easy. The 70s are fairly easy. The 80s, they're easy. 90s, very easy. And notice the King James Version has how many books in the Bible are read? One, two, is that it? I highlighted and read there are only two books. One is Jude. I don't have time to tell you about the other one. One is Jude. Only two books in the King James Bible are lower than fairly easy. And one's the book of Jude, which is the hardest in almost every version. How about the flesh reading ease American standard? Two. One, two. This is flesh reading ease again. Uh, revised standard version. In red, I, I see only one if I'm looking correctly. The new international version, I see again uh, two below. Fairly easy. How's the King James Version doing? It's tied with the NIV in terms of round numbers there. Here's the New King James Version. Uh-oh. One, two, three, four below fairly easy. That's not bad, but that's just the facts. That's all. <clears throat> Remember, one is Genesis, 66 is, Re is Revelation. It's not there. This is the New Revised Standard Version. One, two, three, four below fairly easy. Is that really that much of an improvement? Now, flesh grade level. I'll probably have to stop with flesh grade level. I won't go to all the standards, but uh, uh, King James Version. Uh, above the, I think, seventh, uh, the eighth grade, it only had one, two books. One is Jude. Jude is always the lowest, all the way through the Bible. And Job is the easiest in almost all the versions, all the way through. Job, from Job to Jude. Only two books in the King James Version are at a readability level greater than the eighth grade level. How's that grab you? American Standard Version. Two books, probably the same two. Next slide, please. Thank you, Dad. I appreciate that very much. I never could do this. Also, I kept away from the clock. You can't see. <clears throat> Brilliant strategy here. <clears throat> Here's revised, the revised standard version, 1946. Uh, it only has one. That's, that's Jude, our friend Jude there. Another revised standard version. Uh, and the new international version has two above, just like the King James, only two above the eighth grade level. Next, we have the new King James version. Oh, no! One, two, three, I think that's four, five, six books in the New King James Version have a readability level that's over the eighth grade. How about the New Revised Standard Version? Not quite as bad. One, two, three, four books in the New Revised Standard of 1989 above the eighth grade level. We'll skip this, okay? Next, next folder, please. This is the next folder. Okay. Okay. We have the on the other scores too, but we don't have time for it, I don't think. Now, what about the summary for the entire Old Testament? Here I have the bar graphs right before your eyes. Flesh reading ease, summary, Old Testament, all six versions. From the easiest to read to the hardest to read. They're hard to look at different, do they? What's this big deal about how 
much difference it is in readability. You have to have these newer, improved versions. It's so much easier to read. I can hardly tell the difference. And I can't read them anymore because they faded. But um, uh, the Revised Standard Version, flesh read, they're all, by the way, they're all approximately in the low, very easy, uh, the low easy range right here, or the high, fairly easy range. 81.4, if I can read correctly, 77.9, 79.4, 79.2, that's the King James Version, uh, 78.8, 86.6, uh, boy, it's faded on me. But the King James Version is in the very high, for the whole Old Testament, the very high, fairly easy range. How about the grade level? Flesh grade level, Old Testament summary. Again, so close you can hardly tell the difference in the graph, can't you? I wrote these down, but I can't read them. RSV, 6.9, ASV, 7.0, uh, King James Version, that's grade 7, first month. New King James, 7.1. NRSV, 7.1. New, New International Version, 7.1. What's the big difference? You tell me sometime. <sighs> All this work to come up with this. <clears throat> All right, I know. But... Okay. Yeah, the spelling is wrong in the Old Testament. We corrected that in the book. But uh, <clears throat> this is we were really rushing on these. <clears throat> the Revised Standard Version, this is Flesh Kincaid, grade level. Revised Standard Version, 5.8. American Standard Version, 5.9. New International Version, 5.9. New Revised Standard Version, 6.1. King James Version, 6.1. New King James Version, 6.1. Gunning Fog Index. These are not grade levels, but they're just how foggy they are. ASV, 7.6. From best to worst. Ooh, our friend the King James Version is second place here. Uh, pretty good. 7.7 .7 for KJV. NIV, 7.8. Ah, beats them out. Uh, NRSV, 7.9. NKJV, 8.0. RSV, 8.0. So the first is sometimes last. RSV isn't always first. <clears throat> now, for the New Testament, here's where we see how the old timer, the old codger, the King James Version, handles this. New Testament summary. All New Testament books, flesh reading ease. The higher the scores, the better. Left to right, better to worst. RSV in first place, 83.2. That's easy. They're all easy. Okay? NIV, 82.3. King James Version, 81.7. Uh, New King James Version, 81.7. ASV, 81.5. NRSV, 81.6. How about the flesh grade level scores for the entire New Testament. If you can see them, hope you can. The Revised Standard Version, 6.7. King James Version, 6.8. NIV, 6.8. NKJV, 6.8. ASV, 6.9. NRSV, 6.9. What about the flesh Kincaid summary of the New Testament versions? NIV, 5.5. KJV, 5.7. ASV, 5.7. RSV, 5.7. NKJV, 5.9. NRSV, 5.9. How about the Gunning Fog Index? These are not grade levels again, but they're in order. King James... Ooh! There must be some mistake. Uh, 7.9, the King James Version. NIV, 7.9. ASV, 8.0. RSV, 8.2. New King James, 8.4. New Revised Standard Version, 8.4. Notice the new ones are not always as good as the old ones for some strange reason. I don't know why. Now for the, the drum roll, the grand total, the whole Bible at once, all eight hours for each version. What do we come up with? The flesh reading each summer. Here it is. 81.8. These are all in the, well, this is the only one that's in the easy. These are in the easy, low easy, low easy. These are all in the very high, fairly easy. RSV, 81.8. ASV, 80.3. Uh, NKJV, 7.9. KJV, 79.8. New Revised Standard Version, 79.5. New International Version, <laughs> 79.5. King James beat it out by a few percentage points. Uh, very low, but anyhow, it's, it's a win. You know, you count them whenever you get them. <clears throat> it's legal. <laughs> Not in sheets. Flesh grade level summary. The entire Bible, six versions. And boy, oh, time. Uh, 6.8. 7.0 uh, for the King James Version. The whole thing. New King James, 7.0. ASB, 7.0. NRSV. 7.1, and here he is again, the NIV, 7.1, another victory, it counts. <clears throat> Flesh Kincaid, uh, 5.8, 5.8, 5.8, 6.0, .8, for the King James, 6.0, 6.0. Gunning Fog, 7.7, 7.8, 7.8, 8.0, 8.1, 8.1, 8 7.8, there's the King James right up there, only preceded by this one up here, ASV, for the entire Bible. 
And now we come to this chapter by chapter analysis. I don't have time to go into the details, but check these details out. I lined it up, what it all means here, best to worst, in summary. From fairly easy on up to very easy, guess who wins? The King James Version had 91% of its chapters. 91% of every one of the 1,189 chapters of the King James Version was either fairly easy, easy, or very easy. The NIV didn't do too badly, but it only had 88% of its chapters in the fairly easy, easy, or very easy range. I don't know what these people are saying when they're talking about something so much easier than the other. Flesh grade level. Flesh grade level. Again, if you go from 7th grade on up, the King, by the way, remember how difficult the King James Version is? Very difficult. Zero chapters. Difficult. Zero chapters. The NIV's got one. Fairly difficult. Only five chapters in the King James Bible are rated as fairly difficult. NIV has 14, for what it's worth. <clears throat> I won't, I'll try not to rub it in. But here it is. <clears throat> Flesh grade level analysis of all the chapters in both versions. From grade 7 up, the King James Version, 90% of the King James Version chapters were 7th grade level or easier. 7th, 6th, 5th, or 4th. 4th is as low as it went. The score only goes to the 4th. NIV did, two, did pretty well, but only 86 of its chapters are from 7th grade, 6th grade, 5th grade, 4th grade. You draw your own conclusions. <clears throat> college level, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. One more thing. Here's college level, grade 13. King James Version, zero. No, nothing even on the 12th grade level. Not even a single chapter. <sighs> here we go. I'm going to have to cut it after this here. Flesh Kincaid. Even, this is real close here. 7th grade on up, and they go right down to the 1st grade, 7th to 1st grade, this scale. King James Version. 87.9 of its chapters were in the 7th grade level or lower. NIV 87.5. It loses three times in a row. Not by much. This is very close. I won't rub now. Don't have time for the last one. It's wrong anyhow. I made a typographical error so you don't need to see it. Now just for a quick look. Here's what the graphs in the book look like. Romans. Here's book by book. Romans chapter 1 through chapter 16. Notice the variation. Here's the fairly easy range. Right there. Not a single chapter in the book of Romans is below the fairly easy range. Romans 7 is the easiest, according to this study. 1 Corinthians. Pick these uh, because they were the bars look pretty, not because the scores, they were equal width. 1 Corinthians. What do you know? Not a single one below the fairly easy range. Some into the easy, most mixed. Over here, let's see Daniel. We'll give him Daniel here. And Hosea for Old Testament comparison purposes. Daniel, yes, Daniel is a little bit more difficult to read in chapters. Chapter 3, standard, right in the middle of the standard level. Chapter 9, right in the middle of the standard level. Everything else, fairly easy or better. Hosea, if my eyes don't deceive me, only Hosea chapter 3 was slightly in the standard range, the high standard range. Everything else was either in the, uh, the uh, easy, fairly easy range or the easy range. Chapter 6 was in the very easy range of Hosea. Very easy. And we did that for all the books. Now, concluding remarks, which I don't have time for, of course, but <laughs> without question, an objective examiner of the materials contained in this readability analysis, I think, must agree with these four bedrock conclusions. Conclusion number one, I'll probably just cut to the chase. Each Bible portion does not have the same level of readability. Hey, boy, you saw the... Pikes Peak and all those, the first charts they put up there up and down like that depends on the book depends on the book God didn't write everything the same readability I don't think he intended to have everything as easy to read I think he intended person, on purpose to make some things easier to read than others and the reason why we have the, the variation in all the versions is to the degree they were translating God's original words to that degree they should have come up with the same readability levels approximately that's the way it should have been if they were translating the same words well flesh Flesh reading ease scores for Bible books vary from 90.9 to 64.6. That's from... I didn't hear that. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> two minutes more. Okay. Let's see how I can regroup here. Flesh reading ease scores for Bible books vary from a best of 90.9 to a worst of 64.6. That's all versions right across the board. Flesh grade level scores run from a best of 5.9 to a worst of 8.5. That isn't too bad. That's Jude, our friend Jude here. 
try to diagram that someday. Flesh Kincaid uh, grade level scores range from a best of 3.4 in Job to a worst of 9.41 in our friend Jude. Gunning Frog Index scores vacillate from a best of 5.8 in Song of Solomon to a worst of 11.7 in Job. Uh, it's even more obvious the changes are when we get to uh, the chapter by chapter analysis. Chapter by chapter analysis, plus grade level. Oh, I don't have time for this. Conclusion number two. No single Bible version was always the most readable in every Bible passage. Almost every version had a chance to be number one and number six. Most of them were in between. Oh, yes, the RSV, the ASV tended to gravitate near the top often, but uh, that's the way it goes. There. Let me get to the next page here. Number three. The readability variations among the different Bible versions are not significant enough to warrant the commendation or condemnation of any version on the basis of readability alone. There are other reasons why we may condemn them or commend them, but not on readability. That is a bunch of smoke and mirrors like what comes out of the White House. <clears throat> Enough of that. <clears throat> To give you an idea, flesh reading ease varies from 81.8 to 79.5. That's a difference of only 2.3 on scores that average 80.1. That's a 2.87% variation from each other, from the best to worst. That's not much variation. Flesh grade level for the whole Bible, for the entire Bible, uh, 6.8 to a worst of 7.1. That's a variation of three months. On scores that, that average 7.0, that's a 4.29% variation. That's not much. Flesh Kincaid, from 5.8 to 6.0, that's a variation of only 0.2. That's two months. On an average of 5.9, that's a 3.39% variation. That's all. From best to worst. And, of course, uh, Gunning Fog Index from 8.1 to, uh, I wasted her 7.9. Again, hardly much of a variation at all. And from best to worst. And the last page, which we will... The clock, the, watch, the clock will break to make sure we finish the last page. It will officially stop. Because this is the one you've been waiting for, <clears throat> I suppose. Had to put it in here somewhere since my dad has entitled the book The Reading Ease of the King James Bible. We've got to put that in there. I mean, how easy is the King James Bible to read? That's, where the, that's what you wanted to hear this for. The King James Bible more than held its own in this Bible readability analysis. That's the truth. I went through the many hours to say that. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was wondering what everybody else said about it was true. I heard it so many times. But this is the truth. Even though it, the King James Version, labored under several encumbrances, the ETH, verb bendings, and one more I didn't even mention uh, that I won't get into right now, the King James Bible will probably surprise many. For the oldest kid in the block, its entire Bible summary scores... FRE, 79.8, high, fairly easy. FGL, 7.0, beginning 7th grade. Flesh Kincaid, 6.0. And Gunning Fog Index, 7.8 are quite impressive scores. Especially to those brethren or whatever among us who have heard that the King James Version is written on the college level. They would really be impressed with those scores if they saw them. Perhaps you could share them with them. The King James Version Old Testament summary totals are good also. Here they are. Flesh reading ease, 79.2. That's high, fairly easy. Flesh grade level, 7.2. That's very early 7th grade. Flesh Kincaid, 6.1. Grade level. Gunning Fog Index, 7.1. Now you think those are good? Hold on to your hats. In its New Testament summary totals are very good. Hardly the scores of a punch drunk, tottering codger that can't keep up with the young whippersnappers. Don't you agree? Here are the old timer scores. I put it in quench. It is the old timer, 1611, I suppose. Here are the old timer scores. Flesh reading ease from the New Testament, 81.7, below easy range. Flesh grade level, 6.8, late sixth grade. Flesh Kincaid, fifth grade, seventh month. Gunning Fog Index, 7.9. Who said the champ is down for the count? Did you? See any statistical knockout punches? Any of these readability scores? I didn't, and I looked real hard. 
do flesh reading ease summary scores of easy to fairly easy suggest that the King James Bible is unreadable? Do flesh grade level scores hovering between 6th grade 8th month and 7th grade 1st month characterize a book that only college graduates can read? Do flesh Kincaid summary scores ranging from 5th grade 7th month to 6th grade 1st month tell us that it's time to throw the King James Bible baby out with the bathwater? And while we're using cliches, why not? No! No! A thousand times no! I, I didn't even go overtime, did I? <laughs> Thank you, Don. Amen.